especially underneath that our wall. Now, what about storm surge? Uh, this storm surge right is there. the other thing. Uh, of course, we'll have to wait and see how high it got, but it's coming in right at the time of high tide. We are fearful that they'll have as much as 13 feet above normal in uh, right there in Biscayne Bay, and that yeah, could do that a could lot do of damage. I'm six years old. All I remember the day before was that we were, I remember how pretty the neighborhood was where we were loving it. Miami's pretty. The palm trees, the flowers, everything was set up outside our home. I mean, if I find pictures, I'll post it in the, I'll put it in the edit of it. And then I remember my dad and my mom talking and the news of the hurricane that was on its way. But I guess they didn't take it too serious or they thought it was better because I think we were living at the apartment at the time, the apartment complex in Miami. And we're going to begin on Tuesday, August 18th. At that time, we were tracking what was then just a tropical storm. As this comes along, if it gets close enough to that, it's going to get swept up in that flow and go that way. But so far, it's looking like it's going to stay south, and this system is going to move away as well. So this bear is very close watching, especially late in the week. Let's go ahead and locate. Midnight, Monday, August 24th, 1992. That was when we first began to feel the effects of the hurricane that would change our lives forever. I'm Brian Norcross. This is what's become known as the bunker here at WTVJ. This is where we spent the fiercest hours of the storm. Hours that were terrifying for all of us here in South Florida. We get ready. My dad gets stuff for the night. My brother was one, I was six at a time. And so I guess I decided to hang tight at my godparents' house in Miami. It is bigger, I guess, and concrete. I don't know why. <laughs> Can't remember. I probably should ask before I did the video. And we're getting ready to get there. We all go. There's a lot of family. There's not just us. We're all hanging out, eating, talking, like nothing. Like if it's just a family get, a get together, night falls. And I'm hanging out on the couch, looking through the window. And all of a sudden, I remember my dad running towards me. No, get out the window. And I'm like, the tree. <laughs> And he just breaks in the window. He grabs me one arm. Everybody starts running towards the hallway and the bathroom and the rooms. I think we checked the one room. I can't remember if we just went to, to the hallway first. And all of us grabbed each other like a human link and stayed there until it calmed down a bit. And then I'm going to insert clips of the what happened during the, the video so you get an idea. I just remember bits from there. I remember being really, really freaked out. Um, I remember my mom holding me tight. We're in the hallway. Storm's passing. We're starting. Things are flying. Stuff is crashing. There's like a weird noise in the back. We're all in the hallway, scared shitless. Uh, I don't know if my god, dad, godfather was trying to see other place we could go in because I think all the house all the rooms had windows and the safest thing to do is to be in a place where there's no windows and that's the hallway the bathroom and or the basement but I don't think they have basements in Florida I don't remember I think they're checking the bathroom because the hallway when we ran towards the bathroom right behind us all the people were like that didn't have anybody like to grab on. They were trying their best to keep everything closed, all the doors closed with them, like holding on. I remember my dad telling my mom, check and see if the bathroom's okay to go in. And the bathroom shower wall is like going like this. Like it looked like something from the exorcist. Just and the weirdest sound. So I don't think they wanted to go in there. So we just stayed in the hallway. And they took out a mattress from one of the rooms and the rooms were, that room was about to go with the wind, I remember. They hurry up and grab the mattress. I don't know why they wanted the mattress. I guess it's to protect everybody. I mean, this all happened in the span of, was it 12 hours? I don't know if it was 12 hours. And my dad, my godfather, and all the other men, my uncles, they're in the front of the hallway entrance. 
and they're trying to keep everybody else safe. I'm looking, as I'm looking at everything that's going on, you can see the wind starting to take stuff and then just, just like the movies, the roof goes flying off. I'm looking at my mom like I'm scared. I laugh, but this is my way of comforting myself is when I laugh. I remember shaking out of fear and I'm like, oh Lord, this is getting, this is getting strong. And the wind took the whole roof. That's when everybody like, hold on tight, hold links, hold human chain links or something like that. I remember we're all holding on to each other. And I ain't crying. So, okay, my roof is gone. I don't know how we made it, but we were still holding. I'm trying to hurry up, memory is running out. So, roof left. So, I want to explain how bad the roof was. I mean, the roof just was crazy insane. It looked like out of a movie. Like, all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, the wind was picking up and it just started going in pieces. And my dad was looking at his brother and we were all looking at each other, like, hoping and praying that we make it. The person there... We're we're in the middle of the eye. The eye is kind of safe, but it, it just gives you a second to, and a breather to see what what's going on, how bad the situation is. And that's what they did. They started looking around, see what where else we could hide. And it looked so eerie and quiet. It's crazy. So went through that. Um. So we were standing about 15 feet away from the edge of the water, and at that point, one wave. Ready to go, so I'll tell you what, uh, why don't we get our maps together, okay. and why don't you folks at home... There, John? Okay, great. Uh, we'll get our maps together so that we can continue with uh, specific information, and theoretically, uh, we're going to be set to be in exactly the same situation that we are here. And just these, I've had these maps for a long time. Is there now, any any stupid hurricane the map up there? Properly, map yeah. properly, even as a category four <laughs> hurricane is making its way toward us. All and right. we can hear it clearly. I know you folks at home can't hear it, but clearly we can hear it outside. Let me see. I'm all I'm wireless. wireless. I'll tell you what, uh, 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 maybe uh, Raphael. So the storm comes back past the eye, the eye is past. Um, during the night, I think they tried to save Savage as much as they could from the house. And then when it started up, just before it started up again, that my dad and my uh, my godfather were looking at when it would pass so we could all get together, hug up again. We came back, we went through the last portion, and it was, you know what, around 6 a.m., I think, it's about this time. Everybody huddled, got together, and we started talking, and we were so, like, in disbelief, like, what happened. And I'll show footage, I'll put footage here, but the point of the story is, I went through the worst thing, and I know I'm not by myself, but a lot of people went through that, and I know this year, a lot of people are going through this year, and this is, like, their first, like, big... disaster thing like done real it was a world that brought out the best and the worst in people it was a world that hovered on the edge of anarchy and where heroes walked every street Uh, M16s, they have uh, live ammunition clips. And this is what looters are doing, as a matter of fact. They are actually climbing through here. Every year I always go out and I buy children, my grandchildren's Christmas presents. And I had them stored in the hall closet and they stole everything. 
looters who came in after came the storm. And after the storm. As of this time, they're going to jail. We, we've kind of been lenient. Now we're starting to get serious. Stay here. You sit here. Sorry for you, because I don't have food in my house either. I don't have water. I don't have a roof. I don't even have a car. All looters will be shot on sightings. And that's a real gun in your hand? Yeah. It's a real shotgun? This is real bullet. About this being like a war zone, it truly does look like a war zone in more ways than one. It's not just the physical destruction, it's what the people here are going through. We're saying, Mommy, what happened? Why is God doing this to us? And my husband was holding the roof. My father-in-law was holding the roof. Everything fell off. This is terrible. I wish I'd never go through this again. Next time I'm going to a shelter, I don't care. We have some pictures that are just back from Perrine where the National Guardsmen arrived at a house. Inside that house was one of the victims of Hurricane Andrew killed when the roof caved in. Okay. We need to get to Cutler Ridge now. We, hey, we can go to US-1, but it'll be too slow to serve. We what happened to your home during the storm? Everything was gone, especially mine and the baby's room was all gone. We lost all our clothing. We have no shoes. We have nothing. Everything left. How's your son dealing with the situation? He's not doing very good. He cries constantly at night and the screaming, you know. He, at nighttime, he gets very scared and he asks us to close the door. But, you know. He, but are you getting uh, assistance that you need from the government? I called, supposedly. I'm supposed to hear from them to three to ten days and see if they're going to come see the area where it was damaged and they're going to let me know what they can help me with. And where do you go from here? From there, find a new place to stay at. Because I had a, rent a rented house, so I have no insurance to cover anything I lost. Are you optimistic? Yeah. I just make the best of what I've got now. It's all I can do. Take it one day at a time. Hey, hold on. Brothers and sisters, please. Can't get no more. Please hear my earnest plea. <coughs> we are in a mess that we didn't create. And you are in a situation where you are facing the possibility of drowning. Don't open your mouth and close your eyes. Do the opposite. Close your mouth, open your eyes, and keep kicking. We must not, in our anguish, turn on each other. This is a real tough way to try and, and live. You got people scavenging, just literally scavenging. I'm sure they're happy to, to have all of this stuff, but you know, here in the midst of all of this, you've got kids scavenging for toys. But still, there's a lot of need and there's a lot of frustration. And as we've heard, it wasn't for the National Guard and police, people would be getting shot. It's just that tense out here. There's already been gunfire. Like a hurricane. I don't know if I'm making a point, but if I went through that and I was six, you guys have to be, stay strong and keep pushing. And if we divide, if we would have divided ourselves in that storm, we wouldn't have made it. But we stayed united. We linked literally hands and we didn't let go. Everyone this year has to do the same. No matter the differences, no matter what's going on on the internet, you guys got this. We have to grow from this or it's not, it, it won't, there's no way out. Like if we don't grow from this now, that's it. I think this is the last opportunity for humanity and if we don't, get our act together it's not gonna do any good and i just want to comfort the people out there like that's not the only thing i've been through i've been through a lot but if i went through something so strong and i'm still here and i'm still pushing and i still continued on i went through you know yes i have 
thigh nerves. I have anxiety, but I've learned to go through it. And that's why I'm, I am the way I am today. So hopefully it made sense what I'm trying to do this video. I like paranormal stuff and, and things for the channel, but I wanted to do a little bit something more spiritual. You gotta stay strong. I know it's not easy. If you need to rest, rest. If you need a day off, take it off. Like, it, it, you can't let this get to you because if I would have let that storm get to me, it, I wouldn't be here. And I've been through many things and I'm only 33. So I hope this helped, this video. I hope it made sense. I'm trying. I'm not good <laughs> at communicating. Um, you can see I'm still, it still gets me emotional, but uh, you got to go through it and you got to, it makes you stronger. Whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger and that's, it's a real thing. So, namaste and my kish. Love and light. Don't give up and even though things might get worse, don't let that get to you. And may Archangel Michael and all of its angels continue to protect us and guide us. And I hope everyone enjoyed this video. I just really wanted somebody to get something out of this video. If I made through all, I'll probably do more stories of the stuff I've been through, but for now, just got reminded about what I went through, Hurricane Andrew and the way it feels and the way this year feels, it feels very much the same for me. Edmundo Mitre checks the car of a neighbor he hardly knows. She's worried the vehicle will break down. So don't worry about it, it's, it's okay now. He has his own problems, but he takes time to help. I don't got no income, I don't got nothing right now, so... Like, like, like to help with everything, you know, help, 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 help each other, because that's the only way to be. If I survive that, we can survive this. And you just gotta get through it together and pray and be positive and see what really matters. And I think that's our lesson for 2020 is it's showing us what really matters. So, love you, bye. Brothers and sisters, please, can you get no more? please hear my earnest plea. <coughs> we are in a mess that we didn't create. When you are in a situation where you are facing the prospect of drowning, don't open your mouth and close your eyes. Do the opposite. Close your mouth, open your eyes, and keep kicking. We must not, in our anguish, turn on each other. Turn on each other.